Okay, everybody, we're going to start in three minutes, a hard start at four, because it's going to go live on YouTube. So, um, so we'll start in three minutes. I'm sure people will straggle in, which is fine, but two minutes now. But, and Molly, we, we can leave that door open so people can come in and knock. Okay, we're going to get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ross Arena. I think I know most of you in this room. Uh, I am uh, professor and head of the Department of Physical Therapy, and welcome to our 2019 State of the Department. Uh, lots of e exciting things to share with you uh, that's occurred over the last year, and, uh, and we have multiple uh, presenters. I'll kick things off, and then we'll go from there. And then please stay for uh, refreshments and, and some food after and, and socialize. Uh, also, uh, please follow us on our uh, social media accounts, which are, are listed here. Uh, so um, please follow us and, and uh, keep in touch with us based upon these. So I thought I'd start you know, just giving kind of some general overview and then talking about some things that, that I've been up to. But when I say w things that I've been working on, it's really always a collaborative approach to things, that I don't work in isolation. Uh, it's always a team effort, and, and uh, I can stand up here all day talking about all of the wonderful people in the department I work with. It is, it is really a great, a great environment. Uh, but I thought I'd just touch upon some things that, um, that I'm involved with, working with the team. Uh, on the educational front, uh, we are, we've talked as a faculty for several months about rebranding our master's program, uh, which is now an MS in Rehab Sciences, and um, the faculty has voted unanimously to rename it to a, an MS in Health Span Promotion and Rehabilitation with specializations in healthy living and rehab sciences. So speaking to our strengths, uh, it has moved through the college level, and hopefully that will be approved and active um, in the fall, I believe, of next year. So we're really excited about that, and, and um, have been spending quite a bit of time discussing that. Uh, we're going to talk. You're going to hear about our um, our graduate certificate portfolio. So the concept of a stackable credential and enhancing the educational experience, which is one of the chancellor's primary pillars. Uh, and so we'll we'll talk about that. We're really excited about what we already have established and what we're doing in the future. Last year was our uh, on the professional uh, program front our CAPTI review, and we got uh, accredited for another 10 years and passed with flying colors. Uh, thanks to, to Gay uh, and others, uh, Tina Gretchen, who is not in the room um, on, the, on the DPT side, so Gay is the, the program director, but a tireless effort in, in getting that done, and um, we were really excited with the visit. I think the site team was really impressed with, with the program as well. As far as the faculty practice, uh, that continues to grow, and I won't, I won't steal uh, Aaron's thunder on that. He's going to talk a lot about the practice, but we've launched our second arm, which is more of an office-based component, expanding into uh, sports medicine and some other areas. 
so the, the practice is doing so well and it is, it's been such a, a wonderful addition. It's not really an addition, it's, it's been established for several years, uh, but it does continue to grow. And uh, we've remodeled space now, uh, so we're gonna get some more private treatment rooms, uh, some more gym space, if you will. Uh, so, so things are, are, are really um, expanding there in a very exciting way. Um, and then also thinking about our, our fostering of integration and, and research um, within the practice. Uh, we had a vision of, of having a vibrant faculty practice that is interprofessional and then integrating educational and research excellence. And I think uh, our first real indication of, of it working uh, came with Depika Ledoux, who is an assistant professor. Uh, when she came and interviewed, I still remember taking her to the practice and saying, here's, here's your lab. Uh, and we have, you know, several thousand patient visits and a heart failure clinic, and she's a uh, cardiometabolic researcher, especially looking at falls in the elderly in, in heart failure. And, um, and with that infrastructure, and first and foremost with her talent, she got a perfect score on her K award, which I'm told by Shane Phillips is, is unheard of. And I think it speaks to the unique infrastructure and environment we have, and there's, there's Topeka right now. Um, so that's a really exciting uh, piece of, of the faculty practice and the integration of, of research excellence there. Um, as far as research and scholarship, uh, we're going to start two new tenure, tenure track searches in May. So expanding our faculty, uh, we are about to post those searches. Um, we're interested in several areas, orthopedics, sports medicine, healthy living medicine as we call it, um, cardiometabolic, cancer researchers. So we're going to cast a wide net because we have a number of areas where there would be really great fits. Uh, so we're hoping to bring two really strong people on next year to, to, uh, to add to the department. Uh, we're always thinking about our, our collaborations and our team science approach. We really do embrace team science and working together as a team. Uh, a number of us have our own research agendas and initiatives, but, but, but we're really excited about the team approach to things. Uh, and then Shane will talk about our, our extramural funding portfolio and knowledge dissemination. I'll talk a little bit about it, but we are second to none as far as DPT uh, departments in the country and uh, excited to kind of share those updates with you. As far as my own scholarship, I, I'm a cardiovascular researcher and I oversee several large databases and collaborate with a number of people in this room uh, on those things. So I, I, in my spare time, I, I still do that. And then I'm really passionate about um, chronic disease prevention uh, and, uh, and doing that through healthy lifestyle or what we call healthy living medicine and promoting the health span. So not only just prolonging life, but the quality of life and the number of years that you're functionally independent and happy. Um, and so doing that through exercise and nutrition is a, is a real passion for me and for a number of people in this room. Um, also think a lot about international opportunities and collaboration. So we renewed our uh, MOU with the Federal University of Sao Carlos, which has been very fruitful, and uh, we're getting a new one with the University of Tromso in addition to a number of other ones that we have. And then we're, our community engagement is really exciting, and we're going to have some uh, discussion about that with our par key partner being Altus Academy, uh, and Lindsay Streeter will, will talk about that. So just a few things. Uh, again, I talked about HealthSpan. Uh, so we, we actually, as far as branding and things that we really want to be known for, um, it is this concept of, of creating a longer life, not only a longer life, but a, a higher quality of life uh, and reducing the risk of chronic disease and the burden that comes with it. And it's in everything that we do. Uh, even if you have a condition, have heart disease or have had a stroke, there are things you can do through rehabilitation uh, and, and uh, that can promote the health span and give you a better quality of life. So, you know, we write in this area, uh, we, we um, our science is in this area, and I think this is a, a really key identity for us, uh, and it's why it's in our MS program name now. Um, we also think we're very innovative uh, I, I, as far as branding and who we are and our identity. Um, our, our faculty practice, which Aaron will talk about, we've published on the model because it is truly novel. Uh, and then Jamal Azamek, is Jamal in the room? Uh, he, um, he is in the faculty practice, is a PhD in exercise physiology. He came up with the concept of a doctorate in clinical exercise physiology, which would elevate that practice 
and got a paper published on that model and um, got some real enthusiasm from American College of Sports Medicine on, on that model. So again, I think we're, uh, that's just two examples. We're a very innovative uh, bunch. Other examples, uh, we really are strong in, in technology. Uh, and uh, Sam Bond, who um, we collaborate with, who's in um, uh, BHIS, which is another department in the college, created this health tech jam. She came up with this, bringing students and faculty together uh, to create you know, these technology um, platforms that will uh, focus on healthcare and improving healthcare through technology. It was quite a hit last year. Um, it got uh, picked up by, by UIC Media. There was a lot of enthusiasm for it. This year, we're going to actually have it in the community at Altus Academy and include families from the children who go to that school. So you have families, students, and faculty coming together to create uh, health initiatives or, or new and novel health technology that will address the health needs those families have. And, and we're really excited about that, and we're going to do that this, uh, this fall. And then a couple, just a couple slides about our certificates. So um, we have these 20, between 12 and 20 or so credit graduate certificates uh, that, you know, stack, it's a stackable credential. So a number of our students come and uh, for a, a DPT or a master's degree, but can also take these graduate certificates as well. And we truly, really try to focus on areas that are, are innovative and new and, and impactful for healthcare. So uh, Rich Severin is leading the new technology-based health communication and promotion certificate, and that's gonna go fully live this fall. Uh, we're really excited about that. The Healthy Living Practitioner Certificate is, is going very well. But again, it's around you know, how to deliver healthy living medicine. Uh, we have 22 students enrolled at that this time, and, and 19 of them, I'm happy to say, are DPT students. So you know, really embracing that, that enhanced educational experience when they come to us. And then as far as scholarly productivity, a lot of this is, is busy work, and, um, and the numbers might not mean uh, much to a lot of you in this room. Uh, but this is um, from Web of Science and our publication productivity historically. We're going to close in on 1,000 publications this year as a department, and we're still less than 50 years old. We publish about 100 peer-reviewed papers a year, and, and when we l there's no definitive data to say you know, how the departments rank in the country, but when we look around, there's no one that, that publishes more than us in a, in a department uh, as a group. And as far as how mo often we're cited, um, you know, we're cited now over 2,000 times a year. That means our work is impactful. And again, the, the air is very thin uh, with respect to departments and, and, uh, and how we do. And of note, when you think about how we're accelerating, 445 of our publications have come in the last five years, almost half, and, and we continue to accelerate. Uh, academic analytics is another way to track our productivity. I just pulled a couple of slides. I think Shane has some as well. Uh, articles per faculty, um, citations per faculty. You could see us well above the mean. And then I just snapshotted here. Um, we kind of sit in this allied health, our health sciences system with about 145 colleges or departments. So we're number three in the country here. We're number two in the country here. And these are just two examples of the metrics. We, it's amazing uh, how productive we are as a, as a faculty with respect to scholarship. And then our grant expenditures, uh, just looking at uh, 2013 to 2018, we've increased 46%. We've kind of oscillated here and there, but we're, we're pretty close to our all-time high with respect to that. So that's all I really wanted to say about, you know, kind of an update, and, and you'll hear much more about some of these things. Um, I want to keep it moving and, and, uh, and have lots of time for socializing. Um, and this is something new we're doing this year. We, we, um, we want to recognize uh, the students and faculty and staff who've received awards. We, I'm sorry we can't have people come up and, and get their individual distinctions. Please find uh, Molly uh, and to get your, your individual distinction. But I'm just going to call these awards out. And if you're in the room, uh, please stand and, and then hold your applause until we're done. Uh, so on the student side, outstanding ac academic achievement, uh, Emily Larson, Lydia Moore, I'm going to butcher some of these names, my apologies, uh, Olawami Almosebi, <laughs> Ryan Palowski, uh, Outstanding Case Report Awards, Ryan Palowski, Emily Chase, 
Spencer Fang, Kate Rudnickney, Rudnickney uh, Gina Kerr. Outstanding performance in clinical education, Cole Evans. On the faculty side, the uh, Susan Campbell Award, Cody Fisher, uh, for clinical teaching. Uh, the Students in Campbell, uh, Campbell Award for Academic Teaching Ex Excellence, Eileen Aviota and Tom Bibot. Rich Severin got the AHS Excalibur Award for Teaching Excellence. Congratulations, Rich. And Judy Davey got the AHS Staff Award of Merit. Congratulations, Judy. Congratulations, everybody. And again, see Molly later. Uh, and then these are just previous awards that we, I think, had during the year, but were already recognized. I'm not going to call these out, but, but again, a lot our students and our faculty and our staff get recognized quite often. So that's going to be the end of my piece. We're going to have a number of presenters to kind of give updates in their own areas. Uh, we have a great leadership group and a number of things going on, and, and I love to hear it in their own words. Uh, so Shane Phillips, who's our Associate Head and Senior Associate Dean of Clinical Affairs, will go next. Uh, Gage Rolami will follow. She's the DPT Program Director. Alex Ruin is the MS Program Director. Lindsay Streeter runs our Health and Wellness Academy at Altus, and we have a number of guests from Altus. Welcome. Uh, and then uh, Aaron Kyle is the Assistant Head of Clinical Affairs and oversees our faculty practice. So welcome, everybody, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for the introduction, uh, and uh, thanks for coming, everyone, to uh, the State of the Department 2019 for UIC Department of Physical Therapy. Um, every time I'm kind of having a down day or a bad day, I kind of look at some of this data and what Ross shows and all of the things that we do in the department, and it, and it makes me uh, proud and happy. So um <clears throat> I'll start with that. This is, I mean, it says research innovation. Um, I'm going to be talking mostly about um, some of the uh, accolades the faculty have, have gotten in terms of grant awards, but um, we I think you'll see across all the presentations that we truly are innovative, and I think that um, that will feed back on this portfolio in the years to come uh, that in ways that probably we couldn't have imagined or dreamed. I mean, when I first came here, uh, we were literally... Um, housed in that one building right there. And now, uh, as you know, we, we reach out across the campus in the College of Medicine. Uh, we have collaborations uh, throughout the campus and now in the community. Um, thank you to Altus for coming today. Um, <coughs> here's our laboratories focusing on research. Um, these are kind of the traditional ways that we've thought about our research in physical therapy and rehabilitation sciences. Um, I've added uh, Dr. Ledoux's laboratory here um, and our laboratory, we are now rebranding it a bit to be the Exercise and Research Technology Vascular Laboratory. We have a highly efficient and productive faculty in terms of scholarship. Um, these are just a couple of metrics from uh, a, a software, a program that the university has invested called Academic Analytics. And Ross is right, when you look at that data, Departments of physical therapy are really lumped together broadly with rehabilitation and extra science um, and, and other areas of study that are related. And we are really just doing what I would say well from, a, from an analytical uh, standpoint in terms of percentage of faculty uh, with a grant. We're well above the median, our main dollars per grant, grant dollars per faculty. So, so we're doing very well and we're very productive. And part of that is, is, is why I originally came here, is everything that you guys do, whether it's in the faculty practice, whether it's in the research labs, whether it's in the hospital <coughs> with which we collaborate with. Um, this, is a, this is an image from the Integrated Physiology Laboratory. We're doing exercise testing from some of my own research and exercise and, and high blood pressure. Um, but we're working more and more throughout the campus and, and throughout the community. And, and we do that with an eye towards how are we going to um, better the health of that population, of that community, and that leads to more scholarship. Um, this is just kind of a, a basic report of um, uh, research expenditures over the last five years. 
and you can see that it, it kind of goes up and down. And it really doesn't give you a full picture. I'm going to show you the next slide of our, of our research grant portfolio. And in academics, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of a, a, a big metric that we use is um, in, in, in terms of someone's productivity, in terms of a recognition for their scholarship and their work and their expertise. Um, just taking these numbers, we stand out. Okay, but if you look at and really think about um, this year compared to the data I presented last year, we're continuing to add to this portfolio um, in terms of federal dollars. Okay, and you could see down here from uh, if I added up all the direct costs, and some of this is very tedious to get at, um, <coughs> but if I go to the publicly available uh, databases, you can see that uh, the direct costs are, are much la larger than our fiscal ex uh, expenditures per se um, and, and the dollars that we generate in terms of research. And then if you look at all years, and the reason I put all years is a lot of times these grants and these research projects are just not for one year, but they're on a continuing basis. Uh, you can see that, that we're continuing to grow in this way. And then if you just look at the number of RO1s, um, and NIH grants in that way, we would, we would be almost, almost second to none across uh, departments of physical therapy. So we're doing very well. I have a couple notes down here that this doesn't include training grants um, and it doesn't um, include um, uh, other larger grants that um, we wouldn't necessarily be PIs on or uh, recognized as collaborating investigators on from, from the federal standpoint. Now, last year, if you note this, uh, date here 2016, if we looked at all of uh, the departments or programs of physical therapy that report their data um, as part of uh, the research inten intensive physical therapy program, I calculated we were right towards the top uh, of all of the programs that are reporting. And these include the highest ranked programs. So again, we're doing very well. This is dollars all years to, to the physical therapy uh, program that, that is reporting. And you can notice that it's lower than I re what I reported on the last slide because um, the last slide was 2018, 2019. So the way that this is reported doesn't allow me to compare everything for this year in the same way. I have to actually manually calculate it because it's reported as individual grants on a um, shared website, not uh, through a group um, sharing that we had done in 2016. So if I did that, and I'm not going to name any names or programs here, but we're definitely at the top. Okay, we're over here uh, at no this, this number four here uh, at the top of, of, of re total research dollars. Um, and some of these programs are including direct costs and indirects. All of my calculations are with direct costs. Okay, so we are definitely doing well. If you look at kind of the, the standard in academics in some ways, is the R01. Uh, having an NIH independent R01 grant is, is a large uh, accolade and recognition. That's not the only thing. I'm not trying to say that. Um, but you can see we have nine if we count all of the ones that we have uh, faculty who are PIs, co-PIs or co-Is. Um, we have, we have a number of these compared to many of our, our other programs. And a lot of the other programs include, again, training grants and largest institutional grants, which we don't necessarily uh, account for in our counting now. Um, this is just one example. I, every year, I'd like to highlight some of the individual successes. And um, Dr. Bott has uh, had a terrific year, as she has uh, the last few. And she studies, as, as we all know, uh, fall prevention um, in, in individuals with stroke and individuals with um, who, who are aging and who have a higher propensity for falls in the community. And um, she has a number of grants, again, reflecting uh, her expertise. Uh, she's got three R01s, which is, um, is a tremendous accomplishment. So I wanted to recognize that along with all the students that she mentors, many of which are in this room, um, and, and uh, her trainees. And um, so she's had a terrific year. Um, some of the work that we've been doing in terms of um, collaborating with our, in our own institution um, and in my role as uh, Associate Dean for Clinical Affairs and Associate Head in the department uh, is really thinking about um, our clinical uh, connections and our clinical 
integration and uh, I've been working closely with the director of um, bariatric surgery, Dr. Lisa Sanchez-Johnson and, and uh, Dr. Hassan, who's the chief of bariatric uh, surgery here uh, to really start to think about physical activity and uh, exercise research and clinical projects within, within their realm. They, they perform about 400 or 500 weight loss surgeries per year. Um, they're a very highly uh, productive uh, group in that way, and they see a very unique patient population. And this is just data I wanted to show. This is from a, a, uh, a master's project um, where we had um, Avani go to uh, the surgery department and actually sit down and go through. They had a registry of about nine, I think it was 900, close to 1,000 patients uh, where they, haven't re they hadn't recorded any of their blood pressures in this registry. So we really wanted to get a sense for what's happening, happening to blood pressure, which we're interested in in my laboratory. So she did uh, this study and showed, uh, and it was presented in abstract form, that there's a reduction in blood pressure after uh, weight loss surgery, which we'd expect. But I keep saying, and I keep reminding uh, my, my colleagues in bariatric surgery um, and my team that... Um, after 12 months, you start to see this, I call it a post-bariatric uh, blood pressure creep. And this is an ideal opportunity, I think, for physical therapists and for uh, all of us uh, in the room that are focused on health promotion and, and working to prevent this. If you just look at the blood pressures themselves, they're still in the high blood pressure range. Um, I've told them that I think every patient after surgery and before should be seen by our team. Uh, in physical therapy, and we've started on this path uh, to work with them, and, and uh, much to the credit of uh, Rich Severin, who's working on his PhD, uh, and uh, collaborations with the faculty practice, uh, he started a, a two half day a week clinic, uh, which is also going to serve uh, as part of his research project for his PhD thesis, and here's um, the, the enrollment and the referrals for new patients into that program, we are just barely scratching the surface of this. And I keep, um, you know, reminding people that we should be doing more. So through this next year, that's my goal, is, is to try to expand this, um, to try to help more people uh, prevent, uh, um, you know, this creep in blood pressure, but uh, also other cardiovascular risk markers. So. Um, along with this, and in this vein, I won't talk too much because um, the other presenters are going to be talking about a lot of this, but these are the emerging areas. So the bariatrics I talked about, we have a need here on this campus to really uh, expand and, and look at uh, cancer rehabilitation, uh, sports rehabilitation with Justin Payette. He was doing a tremendous job at expansion there. And in everything we do, we have a clinical aspect, we have a scholarly aspect, and we have an opportunity for students and residents and trainees to work in this environment. And then uh, everything going on with cardiac rehabilitation, exercise testing. And then finally, I'm just going to mention briefly, um, Ross mentioned some of the certificates. One of the certificates that uh, I'm involved with and, and help to direct is uh, the Clinical Rehabilitation and Clinical Research Certificate. And this is a 20-credit uh, certificate, much like our other ones. Uh, that allows students um, that may not have an interest in going uh, head-on into a PhD or master's degree, but start to get some research experiences, um, write an IRB uh, application, do a small uh, pilot project with a mentor. Um, we've had usually two DPT students per year doing this. Last year was our first year of graduating, too. And we have our first student this year who's going to enroll from the community, from so outside the university. Um, and I'll just say that um, we just had a master's student project defense uh, yesterday, and that was kind of the culmination of a collaboration between the student uh, in the orthopedic practice collaborating with uh, a um, certificate student who had previously graduated and two of our residents in orthopedic physical therapy. So. Um, we're starting to see how these uh, programs can really blend together and really enhance the experiences together. So I'm going to stop there, but um, congratulations, everyone. That was terrific. Yay?
Okay, hi everyone. It is really a pleasure to be able to brag about our DPT students. So our students are really among the top in the country from an academic standpoint. Our program is ranked 15th in the country and sixth among private universities. And we have been blessed with uh, uh, an, an incredible number, I'm sorry, private public universities. I see the quizzical look on someone's face back there. Thank you for keeping me in line, ladies. <laughs> and um, you know, the goal of all physical therapy programs is to help students become autonomous, independent practitioners. We also really strive for our students to be outstanding in many areas, and certainly they come in with a huge amount of commitment. One of the metrics that we use and schools across the country use is the national licensing exam. This is given um, three, four times a year, and most of our students take the exam in July after they graduate. And we're really excited that the past two years we've had a 100% pass rate on the first sit sitting of that exam. We generally are always at 100%, but it might be that it takes one or two people one extra time to take the exam. But the last two years, it's been 100% across the board. And what's really wonderful is that our students are not just passing the exam on the first time, but they're consistently above the national average and their mean scores are above the national average. So, you know, you can look at this as a total score and say, where do you fall? And then take the mean score and look at that. And in both cases, they're above the national average. So besides all of their day-to-day -day activities, which are quite ambitious, strenuous, take a lot of time going to class five days a week from eight in the morning till mid-afternoon or later. The students are really dedicated to academic excellence and this is a great picture, I think, of a recent group of students that re represented UIC at the National American Physical Therapy Association combined sections meeting in Washington, D.C. They all took time out from their busy schedules of learning and um, communicating with other students to gather for a group picture. And I think you can see by everyone's face that it was a great experience for them to kind of see what's out there in the world of physical therapy, but also to interact with students and professionals um, from around the US. Other activities, and I wish I could mention them all, that our students have participated in that demonstrate their academic achievement is they put together their own Spanish class. They spend time in the evenings learning the basics of Spanish for medical health professionals so that they can use that in their clinical experiences, but also in their mission trips. Um, Several for the past years, our students have um, gone to Nicaragua and Guatemala and done an incredible um, job of providing care for underserved communities, but it also was for them a growth experience to kind of spread their wings and try out their academic uh, skills and their clinical skills but they weren't content just to go. They wanted to be really proficient and be able to communicate, hence the uh, Spanish club. We've had students present to at our seminars and other um, uh, community um, organizations. Uh, we've had several students put together posters for combined sections, which is really important. And I was sitting listening to Dr. Phillips talk about 
the fact that, um, you know, that there are these relationships with the clinical, um, with the students, with the clinicians, with the researchers, and I started thinking about the portfolio products, products that are being um, developed by students in our program, and that many of these can also be poster presentations, and we as faculty and you as students should be working together to think about how your portfolio projects could be set up from the very beginning to be developed into poster presentations at CSN. This slide got in there twice, so I'm going to go through to social responsibility. These are all areas in our students' portfolios, and there are so many ways that students plan, develop, execute social responsibility uh, types of projects. These are just two. Uh, one group of uh, many students actually took a program to uh, learn about how to do community balance training. And several students then put together a balance training program, brought in individuals from the community who maybe were no longer receiving ongoing physical therapy, but were interested in enhancing their ability to maintain the lifestyle that they really wanted to um, in terms of staying active and preventing falls. So they had a wonderful um, four week long, two or three hour a day. It was both educational as well as activities and exercises. So the persons that participated went home with a program that they could keep implementing. We also had a group of students in the far photo that went over to share their skills with a group of um, certified nurse practitioners who work in a variety of different skilled nursing facilities. And it was a way for our students to share their skill set and help individuals that are working with um, populations in uh, different skilled nursing facilities be safer in their transfers and knowing how to organize those transfers for the patients, the different population of patients that they uh, are care for. Another huge aspect of the social responsibility, as I said, are the service trips. They uh, have gone to Nicaragua and Guatemala, and although the um, current format of those trips um, is changed in terms of uh, the ability to do them internationally, there are still huge opportunities in our own country to do service trips, and I hope we can talk about those and dialogue with those about those with students to see where else your incredible skills can be implemented in communities that would benefit. Another area students are active in is mentoring, and they do this in many ways. They mentor each other by coming in to work, the second year students tutoring the first year students, especially in physiology and anatomy. They also work with students that are interested in physical therapy. We had a group of students go down to the University of Illinois at Champaign and do a presentation for the pre-PT club there. Our students are always available to talk with our uh, new admits and um, come to the open house and provide not only a contact of face but also great information that helps our new grads assimilate into the program. I also wanted to highlight on the bottom and the top the entrepreneurial spirit of the students. We have two students, Christina Jackson and Rachel Meza, that had an idea that mentoring in different high schools in the area around USC and not just talking to students about the 
uh, role of a health professional, but going into more detail about what does that mean in terms of your education, what does it mean in terms of the commitment, what you need to know, how you can really be successful in this area. And they've gotten quite a bit of traction in other colleges in UIC with nursing students being involved, medical students being involved, and now they're passing the torch to the first year students to be able to continue this program. And this is really awesome that there's a sustainability piece, that programs that have great value are sustained and move forward with the next class of students. Uh, another activity, this actually would be and can still be a great poster for those of you that were involved. I see some of you sitting back there. Um, we had a group of students that went out to a school and they uh, created an after school program and committed to going the entire semester to do after school activities both exercise, socialization, a little bit of mentoring with kids that will come up to them with questions. And um, they actually also did uh, exit interviews with the um, faculty at the school and to, to really be able to improve the program. And this is definitely a program I'd love to see get transferred on to the first year students or the new incoming class. I also wanted to tell you about another entrepreneurial venture. They have their Twitter feed so locked down that I can't, couldn't get any photos off it. All I could get was their, their logo, but two of our students, JJ Carr and Jay Kirschberger, put together a uh, Twitter feed and really it's going to be, I think, the start of their collaboration as a uh, practice after they graduate. It's called Athlete Engineers. And they, they have videos on their feed that talk about all areas of orthopedic and sports. Um, and the other thing that it's been awesome for is it's allowed other students who are interested in different aspects of sports and orthopedics to create their own videos and um, talk about areas of interest for them. And it's really very high quality and I expect to see it expand. I expect to see them as two of our alumni that we will you know, bring back here to talk to other students about how to start your own practice. The other thing I really think is great about all of our classes is they do things together. They're not competitive. They don't um, try to outdo each other. They try to bolster each other up, support each other. They are really, um, you know, there to ensure that they all make it through the program and that they all succeed. And um, you know, again, they do it in so many ways, in group projects, um, in academic projects, in mentoring activities. So we're really proud of the way they all pull together and work to support not only their class, but the class that's behind them, the class that's in front of them. I wanted to especially acknowledge the class of 2020. They <clears throat> participated in the second white coat and pinning ceremony, and they will soon be completing their exams and are, I know from speaking with them, anxious to get out and practice their clinical skills and to start that journey to become a clinician um, and a physical therapy professional. I also uh, just want to talk a little bit about leadership. We have students that are leaders in so many ways. They are leaders in their class. They are leaders in outside activities. This year in the class of 20, I'm sorry, 2018-19, IPTA student special interest group 
three of the um, leadership, all three leadership positions were held by students that are graduating in the class of 2019. Uh, Ryan Pulowski, Gina Carr, Kerr, and Alexis Funk. So we know IPTA was in great hands last year. We hope that your vision will pass on to the next um, group. Finally, I just want to say congratulations to the class of 2019, but I have two other awards I'd like to mention. One is that uh, Caitlin from Knacked, if you could stand up. Caitlin um, was voted by our faculty to receive the uh, Applied Health Sciences Academic Achievement Award, and she will be um, honored at the graduation, and um, so we're very proud of your accomplishments. And Ryan Pulowski received the um, chancellors, one of the chancellor awards. So that's um, an award that's given out through the chancellor's office for individuals who show leadership, who show community. Um, uh, what's the word I want, sorry. Who are out there providing community services and mentoring. So congratulations to both of these students. And finally, congratulations to the class of 2019. Truly an amazing class, truly expecting wonderful things from everyone in this class and hoping that you'll all come back and work with us in different ways. I've spoken with Dr. Arena. We're very interested in getting an alumni board together. So you'll be hearing more about that and um, I just really know that we all want to welcome you to the profession, and we look forward to your graduation next Thursday. So thank you so much, everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2019. It's my real pleasure to share with you uh, a lot of data about our graduate program, Master Program in Rehabilitation Sciences. The program is relatively new. Uh, I'm presenting you the results collected over a short period of time, eight, nine years. Uh, in, nine, in 2011, we had only eight students in the graduate program and only seven graduate faculty. This year, we have 24 students in the graduate program and the number of graduate faculty is increased by two, we have nine. Uh, over, over several years, there were more than 100 students graduating with a degree, Master of Science degree in Rehabilitation Sciences. And it's a very important because we offer a degree for st students who want to get a post-professional degree. Okay, my fingers. Yeah, you will see it more. <laughs> the program is truly international. You can see how many representatives from different countries are enrolled in our program. Those are very good, great people, and they work very hard uh, towards their degree. I want to thank all the students in our program, and I also want to thank all the graduate faculty and faculty in the department making efforts helping students to be successful. Uh, the program is oriented mostly on research and most of the students are involved in research, and graduate faculty provide mentoring to those students. I want to mention that uh, over the uh, duration of the program, more than uh, 40 papers uh, in high-impact journal journals were published by students together with their advisors. And those papers were counted at Dr. Arena's report as well. 
uh, such a good journals like Journal of uh, Neurophysiology, uh, Electromyography and Kinesiology, Experimental Brain Research, and other journals. Uh, I wanted to sh share with you a photograph of one of our uh, uh, MS students who won a first uh, prize uh, uh, at the UIC, UIC Research Forum. And more than 40 presentations our students uh, presented at national and local conferences. Uh, here are some slides uh, reflecting uh, happy students presenting the results of their work in front of well-known researchers, and that's a, a, an achievement. I want to share with you a very good news. Our uh, MS student, uh, Pooja Iva, uh, she received uh, award for the best thesis award at the entire university. It's the first time when our MS student received uh, such a prestigious award. Congratulations to Puja and to her advisor, Dr. Madhavan. <laughs> what our graduates do, they have different paths, they have different careers. Uh, some of them uh, at attempt, uh, apply and uh, are admitted to the PhD programs, either at University of Illinois at Chicago. And we have several uh, students here, PhD students in the PhD program in rehabilitation sciences, graduates from the MS program in rehabilitation sciences hosted by our uh, department. Uh, I want also to mention that the PhD program in rehabilitation sciences is uh, a very uh, growing, uh, fast growing program and I want to uh, uh, say that faculty in the Department of Physical Therapy are the most active and productive faculty uh, providing advising and mentoring to our PhD students. Uh, some students continue working as, a cl as clinicians uh, while uh, the other students uh, in are involved in research, clinical research. Uh, there are students graduate from our, pro our program who decided to continue studying in the DPT program and we have uh, such uh, students and some of them will graduate this year. And I want to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity and uh, for uh, ability to share with you achievements of our graduate students. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, I am just going to tell you about uh, the program tonight, uh, how it began, um, and I'm going to provide you with some updates for the Health and Wellness Academy. So this is John Dewey, and he is a well-known educational theorist and practitioner, and uh, he says, we learn best by doing. And so that was the impetus for our focus number one. Um, we thought about how are we providing our UIC students with some experiential learning opportunities where they could take their didactic learning from the classroom and apply it in a real world setting. Um, and how are they doing that with other pre-professionals? And, and then how are we doing that in connection with our surrounding community? So that led to our second focus. Um, and as you are, some of you are aware of the dire statistics of childhood obesity, when you look at schools and how they combat those statistics, many of them are under-resourced. Um, they also have uh, programs that um, aren't based on sound education models, and many of them cannot retain mentors for their programs. Um, so what was our answer? Um, we created the Health and Wellness Academy. What it is, is a service learning course provided through the Department of Physical Therapy. 
And uh, yeah, you might see yourself up there. Um, and what it does is it provides our UIC students with experiential learning. And it's not just our DPTs. So it's an undergraduate program as well as our graduate students are involved. And they also work with professionals. So it is certainly multi-tiered in its mentorship. Um, it is, met, students come to us with many different backgrounds, all the way from humanities up through the applied health sciences. Um, we give three course credits, uh, which incentivizes students to stick through the semester um, in the program. Um, and they are literally out in the community and surrounding schools providing a curriculum of health and wellness um, for our Chicago youth. So I have two different goals. First is for the UIC students that I work with. Um, I ask them to first create relationships with the students before any teaching occurs. Um, as an educator, I know that um, a learner is going to learn from their teacher if they have that um, trust between them. And so that's the first thing I look for from them. Um, and once that's established, they really can plan and implement those lessons that are based on nutrition and physical activity. Um, then for our Chicago youth, I ask them to kind of keep an open mind, consider uh, their own lifestyles, and then to really create a positive relationship with food and movement. And through that positive relationship, they are willing to then pass that information on to others, like their family members and other community members. So how does it work? Um, each week, our UIC students um, attend a lecture, and this is really not a lecture. It's more of a discussion, collaboration, planning time. Um, and then they go out into the community at those different school sites. And it really is flexible. It could be an after school program or it could be implemented um, within the school day. So during that collaborative planning period, um, we have our UIC students. They take those CDC National Health Education Standards. We unpack them. They also look at what are our students' needs, what are the kids' needs, um, and they plan based on both of those things. Um, and really, when they know what the students need, they can create more meaningful activities um, that really kind of connect to their lifestyle. Um, so during implementation at the school, there's two components. There's a nutrition component, and there's a physical activity component. And during that nutrition component, our UIC students um, help the youth kind of go through, they go through a recipe, they make, and then they enjoy a healthy snack or meal. And then for that physical activity portion, that's where our UIC students take the lessons that they themselves have planned um, using those CDC standards and they implement them. So throughout the semester, we try and make several homeschool connections. Um, one of the events that we do is called Taste of HWA. Um, and what it is is the students showcase their learning, showcase both the nutrition and the physical activity learning. Um, and then we invite family members and community members to come and literally taste the recipes that they've worked on throughout the semester and participate in those physical activities that they've participated throughout the semester. So there's um, several updates to the program this year. Uh, the first is we took on a more hybrid look. So we started off in person with that lecture component and then it really truly turned into an online uh, course where we had discussions and online readings. Um, but the students were still going out to those school sites um, each week. So uh, we also received IRB approval for research and we'll begin that in the fall to study the educational efficacy of the program. 
uh, we had more disciplines involved this semester. We had students who were pre-law and pre-med, so that was pretty exciting. Um, that also meant we had a lot of UIC students per youth. We were able to have one UIC student per three kids, um, which as an educator, I know how important that is to work in those small groups and you really do make more of an impact. Um, our eighth grade interns, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second, that was something new. Um, our eighth graders from Altus Academy took on an additional leadership role this year and helped our UIC students plan and implement those activities. Instead of just participate, they were there teaching themselves. Um, we were featured in the UIC News and also the AHS Magazine this past summer. Uh, that was exciting. And finally, since 2016, we've had over 110 UIC students enroll in the program, both undergraduate and graduate. Um, the DPTs and the MS students have been part of that. Seven students have returned to, do, to enroll in an additional semester. So they've taken it for additional credits. Um, and I have to mention, we had one student who graduated this December, came back and volunteered his own time this past semester to help out at Altus. And I think that speaks very highly to uh, the program and who's involved with it. So, um, okay, so there's several people I wanna recognize um, in terms of their leadership. The first person is Michelle Reich, who is the dietitian that works with the program. Um, She's amazing, and she took on additional responsibilities while I was on maternity leave this past semester, and I can't thank her enough for all that she did um, and all that she does for this program. So thank you, Michelle. Um, I also wanna say thank you to the Altus staff and faculty, um, John, Sam, Alfredo. Um, thank you so much for letting us take over your school every Wednesday, um, and then, Thank you to my UIC students. Some of them are here tonight and I appreciate uh, what you have done and your commitment. These are not teachers. They, some of them don't have a lot of background in working with children and it can be very difficult. And I think um, that's recognizable for them to come and do that. And then finally, uh, our eighth grade interns. So some of them are here tonight. Um, and th these are all of them listed up there. But I wanna thank Isaiah. Actually, we're, we'll, let's stand up. I have, so I have some pins. They say UIC Health and Wellness Academy. Um, I, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll hand them out. Can I just get your pins? Nina, Leslie, Victor. Thank you. How do you beat that? Like, that was awesome. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, I am the last of our speakers today. Uh, do not clap about that yet. Um, you're closer to the food than you ever were, so. This will be a brief overview of my role at the faculty practice. 
We have a saying at the clinic, uh, it's called a culture of excellence. And as the words imply, we are perpetually consumed with doing things as good as we possibly can, as excellent as we can. In regards to patient care, we opened up our faculty practice back in the fall of 2014, and we started with physical therapy. That kind of makes sense, we're at UIC in the PT department. Uh, but we quickly grew to offer some other services that you've heard about already, exercise stress testing. We now have a very robust cardiac rehab program, the only one in the medical district uh, right now. We offer nutritional counseling, and to accomplish that growth, you need more people. So we actually doubled in size in our clinical faculty since we've opened our doors. We've seen 25,000 patient visits so far. We think that's a pretty significant number for the time that we've been open. These are some of the uh, quotes from our patient satisfaction surveys. I'll let you read a couple of those. Uh, these were not the only six positive comments that I could find. <laughs> <coughs> this is actually pretty normative for what our patients think about their, their time with us. As I mentioned, we launched cardiac rehab back in the fall of 2016, and it, it has really grown substantially under uh, Dr. Ozenick's leadership. This last year, we've had 1,500 visits for folks. We are now a certified program, uh, and we launched cardiac rehab phase three, which is a maintenance program, which is absolutely wonderful. People get done with formal cardiac rehab, their sessions, after spending some time with us, and instead of saying goodbye, good luck, they have a chance to stick around in a supervised uh, environment where they're working alongside uh, other folks as well. A foundational pillar of what we offer the faculty practices related to education, and one of those um, pillars is our orthopedic residency. And uh, I'm proud of this. We were launched or accredited by the APTA in uh, 2015. We've had 11 residents come through our program. Those 11 residents have gone on to present 30 uh, uh, publications or conference presentations, just those 11 alone, which I think is amazing for, the, for those folks. Uh, important for them, the first time they take the board specialization exam in orthopedics, which is why many people go into a residency, is to become board certified. Every one of them that have taken it have passed on the first time. Something exciting coming up very soon in August uh, under Dr. Payette's leadership. We are set to launch what we think is the first sports residency, not only in Chicago, but in the state of Illinois. And there may be others that are starting uh, along with us. We don't know of any, but there are none right now today. And we, we think we're going to be the first. So we're really excited about that. A hallmark of what we do at the faculty practice is engage with our students, of course. Uh, I wish I had this when I went through PT school, a chance to hear concepts in lecture format from somebody and then go see that somebody perform those on a real patient in real life is invaluable. And so we spend a lot of time with our DPT students throughout their three years with us, with them shadowing us at the faculty practice. In addition to that, as was mentioned before by Dr. Phillips, we have a certificate in research for those folks that want to go on and learn more about the ins and outs of research and uh, dip their toe in the water, so to speak, they can and get credit for this by partnering with one of our clinical faculty members at the faculty practice. An interesting uh, external relationship we have with Georgetown University Hospital in Washington, D.C. Uh, relates to our residency. A few years ago, we uh, started this collaboration. And essentially, after the residency is over, we take one of our residents who've successfully completed the 13-month program, and um, we place them in Washington, D.C. at Georgetown to work. They're still our employee, our resident, they're our person, but they work in a very dynamic clinical environment and also complete a research project that's mutually beneficial for both Georgetown and UIC. Brian Barani uh, was the first one to go. His name is on this paper. It's the second author. This was data sitting at Georgetown regarding uh, physical therapists and their use of diagnostic imaging. Um, it's an interesting place. Physical therapists can order x-rays and CAT scans and MRIs directly in, at Georgetown. And there was five years of data sitting there that Brian was able to collate and put into paper form. And I think this paper actually just came out this month in a physical therapy journal. I'm a little bit of an artist. 
So uh, who's laughing? Um, this is not my stuff at all. <laughs> Actually, that's why you're laughing. Uh, I, I have stick figure problems, like drawing stuff for my patient. I can't even do that. So this is a wonderful rendition of a graphic that we partner with the biomedical visualization department student uh, to do. This is Nicole Ethan's work. And as part of this paper, we wanted to have a graphic or an image of what it might look like to represent what goes on in a physical therapist's mind when they're looking at someone with back pain and wondering if an x-ray might help. I think she nailed it. And so that's part of our paper as well. Instead of me going on and on about my probably biased view about stuff here at the faculty practice, we're gonna let you hear from our residents, our current residents, that are just about finishing up our program here, in their own words. I think where I've grown the most in starting residency is probably my clinical reasoning skills. I think one of the reasons why I wanted to do residency in the first place is just wasn't, just didn't really feel that confident in what I was doing all the time. But since I've been here, I think at this point, I really just have a good understanding of everything and really have a why for what I'm doing in the clinic. Uh, I think one of the big things that I've grown as a clinician is I've you know been able to look at patients as a whole um, I don't look at them as diagnoses or as injuries I think um, the the faculty here have really pushed um, looking at this patient as a whole and everything that comes with the patient whether you know social factors um, other comorbidities things like that so I think that's the biggest thing that I've grown I'd say I'm much better in my clinical reasoning since being here at residency um, I'm much better able to figure out when a patient throws a lot of information at me, what's important and what's not, and then what to, how to figure out what's best for that, that patient going forward. For me, the most rewarding is working with the, the PT program here, um, having them come in and observe us and, um, you know, observe clinical care. And then, um, you know, one of the classes they come in and treat one of our patients. So that's been a really cool experience to to be a, a mini CI for a patient treatment um, so that's I think that's the most rewarding part is being able to work with the, the PT program here I think the teaching has been the biggest part that's rewarding so far getting to work with students and just seeing them grow and help them figure out those little things that you don't get to really see on a day-to-day -day basis as a clinician so it's cool to get in the classroom um, I would say the most rewarding part is probably the teaching component um, that's part of the reason why I came to UIC in the first place. I think that's something that I want to do long term, but it's also nice to just only a year out of school to kind of be involved in teaching and be able to almost like pay it forward. Yeah, Abby really said it well, um, paying it forward. Whether you're a DPT student or an MS student or a PhD student or a resident, I hope that, you know, you, we rub off on you in a way that wherever you end up, you're giving back to those around you. Thanks a lot. Well, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, <laughs> for presenting. And, and again, just a, another great year. Uh, thanks again for our special guests um, and uh, for everything you all do. This is, is really a great place to be, uh, as we've, we've seen. So food and uh, refreshments in the back. So please uh, mingle and enjoy. Thank you.